blue side for this game, Fnatic on the red, immediately starting off with a Rek'Sai ban. Yeah. Once again, targeting Rainover's champion pool, which as we know, has been hit a few times. But a very good ban against Rainover. I think this is his strongest champion by far, especially because of the, the global pressure it brings, which is something Fnatic uses so well. I mean, you don't want to try and play the map against Fnatic. It is almost always going to go wrong for you. Fnatic are so good at controlling these minion waves and use these globals effectively. So far, Riven is still open. We might see Elements just try something different and not even go for a potential Rumble early pick, and therefore don't really care about a, a Riven coming in from Huni because he obviously has so many other picks as well to play. Of course, the Jace ban against Febbim has had a series of good games on that one. I suppose he's pretty much had good games on just about everybody, or rather Fnatic has as a team. And also the Evelyn ban too. So Fnatic, interesting choice against Dexter here. Who's, okay. You know, Leaving the Gragas up, they're kind of trying to see if Elements will first pick it up. Yeah. I like their, their Evelyn ban, though. Dexter was so strong on it yesterday. As well, sorry, not yesterday, but if you look at last week, we had great early game, and he's super important for the early game of Elements. So that's a pure target ban against him. We have to see what else is open. Gragas, as you said, two junglers being banned away. We have Alistar open as well. Rise and Rumble. So the two AP top lanes, the main ones we normally see, are gone. Therefore, Elements also saying we don't have to ban the Riven because we weren't even planning on running the Rumble in the first place. So they're just going to swap it up instead. And normally, a Gragas would come in as a first pick, but also now with Sibir ban and Kalista dropping down in value. Just a bit. Corky rises up. I do think Gragas would have been a fine first pick as well, though, for Elements. Yeah, clearly they were valuing that Corky, however, so Rainover will be happy to let the Gragas fall into his hands. And the Kalista for Reckless. Would not be a surprise, even on patch 5.13, we have still seen it used to great effect, but there's still time on the clock. Yeah, this is one of the other AP top laners Huni has played before, obviously, the Echo. That's not, though. Haven't seen it in a few weeks, and now that's... <laughs> that's not one of them, unless it's the AP Trindamere is back with really. Rune Glaive. Yeah, Instead, though, sense. Fnatic will get power picks for themselves. With Elements taking away that Corky, Knowing that Reckless can just take Kalista anyway later on, that is his most played champion. Yes, again, it has been toned down a little bit, but it's still a fantastic pick. And that's why I think it's so scary that you now also give this jungler over to Rainover, because you are the one who banned the Rek'Sai. side. And that suddenly loses quite a lot of value, because he can still pick up Gragas. Yeah, we'll have to see if this does prop Dexter to go ahead and go towards the Elise. We saw it be very well effectively used earlier today. Didn't think the Anivia was going to happen, but you know, Froggen did play a last split. At least once he when tends he to randomly he find just ways to, to play. He just likes to pass over it, you know, yeah. hundred, see what, what can happen. I but. mean, if Fnatic ran a low mobility composition that had to try and engage on elements, the Anivia would work wonders, but uh, would obviously not be a blind pick right now no, no, for no. him. I mean, you can't take a risk like that. It's it's so early on. You're facing off the best team in Europe, and it looks like we will be seeing a Nidalee and, of course, a Shen pick up. Remember, this is a flexible pick. Yeah. Good enough for JWoww. So also this Nidalee pick, this is what we see more and more now. Also with Runeglaive getting a buff in the early game here in 5.13, especially for Nidalee. She becomes in, she comes in as this early game jungler that can go even with the Rek side, but beat the Gragas in the early fights at least. And that's where elements are looking for early pressure from Dexter. This is what we talk about. He needs to be the guy setting up his lanes because on their own, Taps and JWoww are not going to win the lanes. Froggen, you can trust the two side lanes have not been performing well enough that Dexter can just leave them alone. I'm curious to see what route Dexter decides to go with this Nidalee because the two successful Nidalees we've seen on 5.13, Svenskaren and, and Diamond Prox, took a very, very different path. That's something for in-game, obviously, we'll take a look at it, but Diamond definitely had a bit more of a late-game scalability going to him, but Sven, man, did he make it hurt early on, and if Dexter can get that same kind of impact, Fnatic could be in trouble here. Very quick lock-in. Or rather, still hovering on the Tristana, but there we go. Okay. Now we lock it in, and a Jarvan. Now, where could this be going? So, I mean, Huni could take it to the top lane. We have seen Jarvan in the mid lane as well. Gravity played it over in NA as an example. So for, for now, it's still a flex pick. Obviously, Fnatic very heavy on the physical damage side at the moment. Tristana, though, it's a pick I really like. I think now also with other mm -hmm. AD carries being nerfed a little bit, she really rises up in value. Fantastic uh, tower pushing ability. At the same time, her laning phase is honestly pretty decent after she's been getting a few buffs here and there. So I think it's a strong pick of all for Fnatic. Obviously with Alistar, not exactly going to be there. The lane where you destroy people in the early game. Mm -hmm. But you want to wait till you scale that up, and that is true. The, the Tristana is a very, very fast pushing tower menace, really and a lot safer than other similar champions like Jinx, for example. Now, 
elements they go ahead and lock in the mid Varus and also the Janna for Nif. So we now know where that Shen will be going. Yeah, and looking at what Element decided to do, this is why they first picked the Corky. So you have Corky as the AP, or some of, somewhat of an AP champion. You have Nidalee in the jungle. That does enable you to get a Varus in the mid lane because you have a, a fine mix of damage coming in. So for Elements, that's why they first picked that Corky here, and that's why they banned the Rumble to avoid the Riven as well from Fnatic. It is a poke comp, very standard, loads of focus on long range poke and then of course a disengaging support however Fnatic have run twisted fate before against him and he's such a good pick into poke if they decide to lock it in also to camp the javan lane oriana would be a lot more passive though for them yes that is true however there would definitely be some ball delivery but that's not going to happen today febivin opts into the victor we will have some poke and some lasers flying back and forth in that mid however Fnatic, they are getting a chance to experiment just a little bit here New picks coming out across the board. Let's see how Huni performs on that Jarvan. Yeah. This is JY on the top. Another big carry for him that has risk in it. I mean, Jarvan, you want to snowball that early game. At the moment, it's mainly going to be Rain over to, to help him. There's no twist of fate like we saw yesterday with the Riven pick. Instead, the safe one. It's the victor. It's easy way clear for himself. It's fantastic late game scaling. You have Tristana, you have victor as a backline threat here if you are fanatic. So their scaling is mm -hmm. great. 1-4 setup, potentially, Jarvan in one lane. Good thing about Tristana as well is she's a safe AD carry because she has obviously her W to jump away. She can even shoot people with ulti. So you can even put her in a side lane if you want to push three lanes at once and then just group them together once you want to start pushing these towers down. So very standard Fnatic setup, even though there's obviously a few new picks for Reckless and for Huni. This puts a lot of pressure, especially on Dexter now to, as we said, he had to make an impact in the early game, but he especially has to with this scaling effect that's going to be coming into play. The Tristana, the Jarvan, if it gets ahead, the Victor. I mean, there's some scary damage potential, but let's see who can take this one away. Will Fnatic continue their undefeated run, or will Elements grab a win to stay alive in the playoff race? You guys tell us at home. Hop on Twitter. Hashtag FNC win. Hi, or hashtag Elements win. Deficio's mom. Nick's just saying hi back, guys. No time for that, though. We're going on to the rift. Here we go. Elements versus Fnatic. It's going to be a great game here, Pyra. We see so many of these poke conversations, and once you play them, you have to make plays in the mid game. You cannot just sit back and play passive. That is going to force Elements to be proactive on the map, but it's also going to give openings to Fnatic to set up these big plays. Huni can engage team fights, but he can also be the split pushing threat for himself. I wonder if he's just going to go Brutalizer and Tiamat and just become such a bully. JWoww might want to watch his back. Nif is actually going to back him up here. We may be looking for an Elements lane swap as tabs. The rest of the team is around the side. Dexter hiding in the brush. Pixel brush. Rain over moving away from the rest of the Elements as he yeah. revealed themselves. See a random spear flying out of the jungle. You don't always want to stay around. Obviously also for Elements, it's a lot about playing it fairly passive. The first 15 minutes, you want to get the Trinity Force on your Koki. You want to get one or two items completed on your virus in the mid lane before the siege really starts happening. Fnatic running wave clear mid lane. Tristana, once she gets a bit of time obviously at the waves, will start clearing them. Fairly effective as well. But really the thing for Fnatic here is Huni being the split pushing threat, Reckless being safe enough to sit in the side lane as well and maximize farm on your carries and then group with Fepivan. And you have zone control from the victor and you have the tower damage from Reckless. Once you get your E on the towers. Few hits, it just explodes. Oh, yes, indeed. So, Reckless and Yellowstar are still hanging out close to the bottom as they've warded away to try and take some Krugs away as Nif, Tabs, and JWoww are moving up to the top side. You had to take a look back to week number three when these teams last met. Obviously, a win for Fnatic. They had a oh, really? very, very massive lead over Elements. I don't think you could really predict that one coming <laughs> to Fischio, in all honesty. But uh, this time, Elements are looking to maybe make things a little bit different, being some proactive, moving up to the top side, knowing they may not be able to do too much with a very safe starting lane. And maybe keep Huni on the back foot. Yeah, and it's Elements swapping against the Jarvan pick. Normally, when you have a Shen, you don't want to lane swap. He excels at having a standard lane where he can get free farm in the start, get the first tanky item very early on, and then start becoming his global threat. In a lane swap, he kind of loses some of that, and he often gets denied quite a lot of farm. We need to see how Elements wants to play it out. If they leave the top lane to JWoww once the tower goes down. Also, the Corky Janna lane would have been more than fine into Tristana Alistar, so they're giving up 
bit of lane pressure, but obviously lane souls right now tend to be very fast. It's like four or five minutes, first tower's gone down, you tend to swap it back. And now it's already on the first tower. As you notice, j is here. I expect Element to give him that lane once tower goes down. Dexter, meanwhile, he just continues farming. You don't need him up in this lane. Instead, get a strong jungler. Also enables him to gank potentially the mid lane. If there's an opening right now, though, Varus is pushing. Yeah, not really going to be able to get much of an opening there. Jewa actually tanking the tower for just a moment as they clear away the last cannon minion standing between them and finishing it off. Not so many problems with Fnatic down the bot side. Dexter just will be able to get himself a buff there. Fnatic definitely able to take their time about this yeah. one. Very standard stuff with the 3v0s that we've been seeing lately. Just complete mirror from both teams. And what we then so often see is Fnatic leaves the lane to Huni, send Reckless and Yellows out to the top lane, especially when Huni's playing these carries. And then they're going to swap top instead and have this 2v1 lane against the Shen, while Huni can then get a slow push down towards them. Notice how Yellows have already left the lane, setting up for Dragon. Reckless is going to do the same. This is no longer a meta where the AD carries are the main focus. They're no longer star players. You know, we got tired of them. Instead, top laners, you're going to get full tower. You're going to get all the gold. 275 for Huni. Especially if you're somebody who can carry the way he can. Fnatic will also be able to secure themselves a very early dragon unless Dexter can do something about this. He's got the ward on it, puts his heal up. It's going to have to be a hell of a javelin. Rain over. Oh. Is the one the Nidalee goes in! The Nidalee gets knocked up! The Nidalee hops back, but the dragon's still alive! Smite it down! Who's it gonna go to? That's first blood given over to Reckless. All of a sudden, it goes haywire. Fnatic have secured the dragon, but they may lose their lives. Huni has got to be on the run. Elements snap the trap shut, but they can't catch anybody. Fnatic managed to disengage, get the dragon, get the first blood here. Dexter landed the spear and was like, okay, I'm gonna kill him now. This is so easy for me. Just jump in, the heal came in from Reckless, saved Rain over. They got the kill as well. But basically what happened here, Fnatic was slower at taking down their tower. So Elements had time to bounce the wave top, then recall to the bottom lane. Notice how we have taps as well down here in the bottom lane with Dexter, because they already killed the top tower. So he's going down, the heal saves Rain over. And everyone from Fnatic now just wants to disengage after getting the dragon. Taunt so close and just flashing out. But elements were faster pushing, allowed us to almost stop the dragon. But it allowed also JWoww to get quite a lot of farm while Huni was busy down the bottom lane. It's the one saving grace for elements right now after all that they tried so close to being able to secure the dragon. A couple of kills. JWoww got some farm, but Reckless now is on cleanup duty up top and he's perfectly happy with that amount of CS he'll be picking up, not to mention that first kill. And this right here is one of the reasons we don't see these early dragons very often anymore, because in these lane swaps, it's so much about just 10, 20 seconds that can be impactful. And this early dragon obviously delays you a lot. You don't farm anything, you don't get a lot of XP because you're just standing there with multiple members on the dragon. So Huni is stuck in the bottom lane because Regis is now getting the priority farm top for himself and he's freezing it, something Fnatic did yesterday as well. Meaning the other two lanes have to play extremely careful because your AD carry is stuck up there. He's not going to go anywhere. He's just sitting and he's applying zero pressure for now. So after that brief moment of excitement, we're back to a lot of pressure on the bottom side. However, a semblance of normalcy here. Elements have a gold deficit of about 500, mostly courtesy of that first blood and pretty much all even across the board elsewise, except for that dragon that went so closely Fnatic's way. Yeah. Still, a lot's going to be on Dexter to try to make big plays, big impact. Right now, he's trying to keep up in farm versus Rainover, who's sitting on his bomby Cinder, working his way towards the Cinder Hulk. JWoww's going to head up to the top in the meanwhile. He's going to catch pressure. the wave Reckless is slowly building up here. And obviously, in lane swaps, it's not even that much about the goal. It's about the experience on the members. For now, Huni's level 4, but he's getting the waves down here, bot lane. JWoww is going to go and try and catch the wave. We see Reckless build up. So both top lane are staying even in that case. Huni, though, catching up. Catching a bit of farm. Got the help from the rest of his team to secure it. Got to stop a push as well from Elements. Rainover might go and punish JWoww. If he shows himself too early in the lane, it's a very long lane he can gank in. He just needs to wait for these minions to come down to his tower. When he's still stuck under that tower for the time being, he's got a couple of ward companions there just to make sure no one is going to try to get the dive on him. Meanwhile, Tabs and Nif will have some free farm all to themselves. Rainover hanging out up in the top. In case JWoww tries any funny business, Yellow Star's following him though. And JWoww just placed a very smart ward here to spot exactly this. Notice also how Yellow Star is walking behind Rainover, so he knows Rainover is going to spot the potential ward. And therefore, he doesn't waste any time if they 
felt, felt like there was no chance of the game working. Obviously here, the player is not even killing JWoww. He's saying, you're not getting any farm. And get Steve, him off the tower. Steve didn't get any farm yesterday. That worked wonders for Fnatic. Now they're doing exactly the same. Dexter was on the top side. He recalled. No assistance for JWoww. He's now losing all these minions. Tough for him, seeing as he's already falling behind. Elements are going to be able to take a tower, but yes, this is the tough thing for JWoww. He's falling behind in farm versus Huni here, who has been kept down a little bit himself, but he's still going to get a wave, push his way eventually, whereas Fnatic are just not letting up on this pressure here. But this move from Fnatic was predictable, because Yellowstar left the bottom lane. Rainover left the bottom lane. That's why Huni was standing there on his own, and he even backed away from the tower. So Elements knew there was only one place they could be, and that was up with Reckless in the top lane. Dexter could have been there to try and help JW make them sit on the tower. If you're two members on the tower, three guys rarely want to dive. You're obviously Huni at TP, so that might have been the counterplay for Fnatic. 4v2 dive and teleport, and that's why Elements just backed away. But it's really, really annoying for JW that he lost so much farm. This is true. For Fnatic, yeah, they are making predictable moves, but they're getting away with it. This is kind of the story of the lighter games of the split for Fnatic. They have been behind several times. They have made mistakes. They have they have made plays that can be capitalized by stronger teams. However, it just has not been punished. Chaos Storm was out. Froggen looked to push in on Febivin. It will be pushed back for now. But again, looking back at it, honestly, Elements made the right call, saying we're not going to try and defend it because Huni can teleport up and just 4v2 dive us. So if maybe we're sitting here trying to defend, get one minion, and then we die to, to the tower dives. Mm -hmm. So smart enough him to back away. Fnatic also didn't bounce the wave, so we saw JWoww catch a lot of farm from that. And it's now going even with Huni. Obviously, he's going to get a wave returning. So, all in all, a good read. Predictable move from Fnatic, but also Elements saying, we know what you're setting up to do. We're just going to take bot tower and then have that even it out or close to even it out. Because both teams have been itching to get closer to that mid game since they've really not been spending that much time in all the proper lanes. We'll see what unfolds here as the next dragon comes up in less than half a minute. Reckless, fairly deep. There's Tabs, Dexter, and Niff waiting in the wings. But Yellowstar has his back, and so does Rainover. We'll see what becomes this as Febivin starts to move down into the vision. Elements know something's up. Oh, uh, nice not a great laning phase. Remember, Febivin was forced back after that dragon fight as well. Froggen was not. That was a big advantage. And again, one of the reasons these early dragons can be so risky. But Froggen on Virus has been such a key pick for him. Yesterday, he looked great on it. It allows him to have impact in the mid game, which is what we see from more and more mid laners. And Froggen has been one of the star players on this Elements lineup. So they need him to do more than just late game team fights. He can do that on, a, on Virus. That's why I think it's such a key pick for him. JWoww going back to base, sitting ready with Teleport and Fnatic. Looking to go in. Hoonie's coming. Teleport. Here comes Hooney. Dexter's already getting the hell out of dodge. There's the spear. He's going to go in with a standard of his own. Dragon a little bit low. Tabs is in the picture. Jaywalk comes against the taunt. Dragon is secured. Rainover's caught up by the chains. Hoonie might be the one going down. However, speared by Froggen, or rather arrow down. Reckless gets the knockback and gets the pickup onto Tabs. Right before his rocket came back off the cooldown. Dexter waits as he transforms back into the cougar form to jump the wall. Tab clearly did not expect that damage. He had heal ready, but just got popped in the very end. He had four charges of the bomb on Infibian using cleanse, and he's just back away. But again, Fnatic, starting early dragons, elements had multiple members around it, not respecting their damage coming in from them. Once again, they get the dragon, but they're forced back, and elements get damage on some other objectives. They might be able to push a little bit more into this, but Reckless avoiding taking damage is able to push them back. He's starting to become a real threat in and of himself as early as it is in the game. Two kills so far on the board for himself. Still working his way towards that Infinity Edge. But let's take a look at that Dragon fight again. It was hectic. So again, look at the minimap. You can see everyone is around the Dragon. Elements is split up at first. That's not the greatest for them. You want the virus with your Janet to protect him. That's why Reyna was looking for that. Jump in, Huni goes in, has to flash away. He's very low, he's very squishy. He's only level six right now for himself. Pippen is level eight in the mid lane instead. But look here, Taps exploding with heal ready. Didn't manage to use it because he simply didn't expect the damage coming in from Reckless. That's one of the things you gotta remember. Tristana, once she gets a BF sword, now that she has a AD scaling on her E, does pretty good damage in the, in the mid game from that ability. Her problem yeah. is the fact that she relies so much on auto attacking otherwise. And that's why she still has a dip in the mid game. Because you gotta build up Infinity Touch, you gotta get Phantom Dancer or Static Shift, gotta get maybe towards the third item before your auto attacks really become impactful. And that's why she still has a bit of a 
of a weakness, but definitely stronger than it used to be because of E now having that AD scaling. And with that, Fnatic, 13 minutes in this game. It's only slight lead on the gold. 2-2 two two in towers, obviously, thanks to the switch arounds that have been happening, but they've got those two dragons. Those could come in very handy earlier on. And if you take a look at how everyone's performing across the board, that Tristana is about 30 CS ahead, just about, over the Corky. So Tabs definitely has got some work to do, but at the very least, one thing saving grace right here for Elements is that Froggen has just about the same lead. Two former teammates, Reckless and Froggen. They're even in farm, winning against Febivan and Taps in this case here. That's an important thing, having your Tristana scaling, but it's even better for Elements in the sense that this Varus pick is gonna be the big, big carry. We know Corky falls off, the Pokemon Frogan is what's going to win Elements the game. The whole comp is built around being able to siege. That's also why you saw Huni stand at the Rift Scuttle, if you saw before he was standing there getting the speed buff near the Baron. He was waiting for Elements to group and start poking towards the tower, and then he could just rush in and start a fight. But obviously nothing happened, so he just went back to the top lane. He's not been having the same impact simply because of the way the early game went. Fnatic was slower taking the tower, went for Dragon, meant that Huni did not go get this lane to sit and farm in like we saw yesterday. And then Elements made a smart play, grouping against him, take his tower down, and obviously avoid that play up in the top lane. Fnatic was sitting Ooh. up for so just smart play in Froggen, man. Nice deal. I like him on Varus, man. He's so much more impactful in the mid game. And this is exactly what Elements need to win games. So far, so good for Froggen. Able to snipe away a red buff from Rain over. See if he's able to get a little bit more damage dealt onto Febivan, who clears away the wave. Nice combo there. Jay Wow waiting around to see if he can't get a fight going with Huni. The wave at his back, but he's not going to risk it for now. Dexter moving up into the Fnatic jungle still. Timer is ticking for this team. Fnatic's late game scaling is going to be terrifying. And Elements, they've had history with late game. True. Not always good. The poke from Elements will also scale well because of Frog and obviously because of Nidalee being in there. So there's multiple poke components from Elements, but you can see, again, the whole setup is group, start landing this poke here, have Stand United to save one of your carries, have Nif to save one of your carries. And we also got to see Febivan building uh, a new thing we've seen more and more mid laners do against poke on Victor is this movement speed build where you go for Luden's Echo because it offers 10% movement speed. Now, you get, you get a Lich Bane later, that's 5% as well. You obviously upgrade your Victor item, whatever it's called, for, forgot it now, to get their second upgrade on Q, the Hex Core, to get even more movement speed. And you use that to dodge the poke and also to get in range to blow up these squishy targets. It makes that immobile, or rather less mobile, champion more mobile. Mm -hmm. It's a bonus at least. At the very least. So Huni, still sitting under that tower. j -Wow just keeps coming in and out, trying to trade a little bit with him. One level advantage over to Huni right now. And actually, Huni has pulled ahead once again in the farm game, but this is really where the game is about. The next dragon is less than a minute away. Right now, there's no wards directly in the river, but Fnatic, they've had a couple of close shaves. Let's see if they're able to get a strong one here once again. Once again. It is very key, though, that j -Wow keeps having control of Huni because the Huni roaming down from the top lane is one of the ways Fnatic can set up a flank. Otherwise, he has to use his teleport, and that's why Elements will have double global in their advantage on the Shen to play around that. So as long as he can keep Huni in check, now that he has obviously been set behind as a top laner, that's one of the ways you can always make sure Froggen is safe in the mid lane to land his poke. We talked about how Tristana is going to sit in the other side lane just to maximize farm on three carries, meaning that only Febberman is here for wave clear at the moment. Reckless is obviously going to join him as well. Trinity Force is completed. Froggen has cooldown reduction. He has armor penetration. He is ready. He's loaded. Fnatic, though, playing around these early dragons again. Might get the third one around 17 minutes. That's very early in the game. But every time they did it, they lost something. Or at least it was extremely close. Notice how JWoww keep pushing in against Huni. He just wants to have a have an eye on him. Always be near to see when Huni's teleporting away. Yep. Same might cost him his life up. though, because Pepper is coming. Just might. There he goes. Gets the taunt out, but Huni buying some time. In comes the laser. The Chaos Storm. He's able to avoid the gravity, but still, he's gonna go down. And Huni picks himself up a kill with the help of Febivin. However, Elements will trade for Drake. Yeah, now Elements can go to the mid lane as well. The tower. It's already being poked down. They have three members around it. Taps playing out the bot lane instead, though, so not going to value just a clear push on it because they want to start the slow push in the bottom lane as well. But Fnatic gave up the dragon. 
knowing if everyone goes top lane, Dragon is gone. They got the two early ones, so not aiming for five Dragons. Instead, just saying we couldn't even contest it if it was because of the poke. There's a couple things going on in that situation. You've got the two early ones, so you can make the argument that, yes, we can afford to give one up at this point. Sure. It's fine. We're going to scale really well late anyways. But another thing that that gives is some much-needed gold into Huni's pocket. This guy has been an absolute essential part of a lot of their big victories. Even when he doesn't step up, yes, there's other people that will, but they wanted to get ahead. He gets that team on now. We'll talk about that later as Rainover is caught up, throws a big barrel. He's burning away. There's the heal from Reckless. Second, Second time. time he saved somebody today. Good guy, oh, Reckless. Close call. Saving Rainover again and again, but it doesn't matter for Elements. They're not here for the kills. They're here just to poke you back into base so they can take your towers. That's what they're playing around for. Ooh. One of the reasons also Fnatic didn't want to go for that dragon was the fact they had lost vision control around it. And if you cannot go in and start dragon instantly and force Elements to fight you, you don't want to start dragging then against the Pokemon because they're just going to sit there and shooting fish in a barrel and you just keep getting hit left and right. You tank the dragon. Either you commit to dragon instantly and take the fight or you don't even start it in the first place. That was that was what Fnatic decided. And therefore they went top as well for the kill. But mid tower going down. Elements playing safe and just fine here in the mid game. They certainly are, but they are indeed making plays. Someone who criticized them for in the very... Early on in the split, they just weren't getting as much done. And I have to agree with you, I love Froggen on this Varus pickup. It's been a new development for him, but so far it has been working wonders. We are approaching 20 minutes in the game. The gold is close on dead even. Two dragons to one, two towers to three. Elements are looking to make a statement here, keep their playoff hopes alive, and to be the first team to knock off Fnatic in the European LCS this split. Now, we've seen this before from Fnatic. We've honestly seen it even worse, where they were down 3 4k gold at 20 minutes, and they still managed to come back and win the game. So this is by no means bad. I mean, they're heading goal. Mm -hmm. Fnatic also playing against this massive mid-game spike of the Varus and the Corky on their side. They're just going to scale up Bevin. They're going to scale up Reckless. Two early kills. There's no rush for Fnatic at the moment. But it's still fun to see a team like Elements improve as well over the split. And it's funny if you look at Nuke Duck from Rocket and, and Frogney at Elements, two players we were saying, they are so good, but we need to see more impact from them. Mm -hmm. Now that we have this poke meta, they have been stepping up, both us also on Varus. I mean, that champion, man, is blessed. Yeah, quite well. Solid win rate in the European LCS. Huni tries to go in onto Nif, and he will not be able to find nearly enough damage, but he does go in for the Demacian dunk, and Dexter takes some serious damage. Hailstorm, though, isn't going to go anywhere. <laughs> Fnatic will have to back away empty-handed. Dexter just doing a little bit of damage to Huni. He's like, this is what I can. And Huni turns around, just destroys him oh, in a second, it. and forcing two flashes for himself. Obviously very key in trying to delay the push because you want to make sure that Elements is too afraid to group up and siege. The flank wards are going to be so key. You can see two of them here just left the frog and that's one of them is going to spot Rainover. When you play a siege composition, you've got to ward your flanks both sides every single time and you've got to have knowledge about what wards do you have behind you in case the TP comes in with the flank because that's the only thing that can really mess you up. It is the flanks against Pokemons. And the answer can potentially be to go off and side push it yourself. You talked about Huni and his split push potential, but Reckless, he may get pincered here, but he's certainly going to get a tower for it. Tristan, and remember, out of all the 80 carries you can split push with, this one is probably one of the safest, and he just might get away. Yeah. They know exactly where Dexter is. He'll get up. You can fast push the waves. You can fast push the towers. You will destroy them. They don't stand a chance. You are safe because you have your jump, you have your ult to shoot someone back. So Tristana is one of these AD carries that can handle herself. And obviously we have seen more and more from Reckless where Fnatic use him as a bit of a split pusher now that Assassin is no longer in the meta. It used to be Febivan who would go to the side lane like Zed or LeBlanc and apply pressure, but that no longer happens because these Assassins are not played. Instead we have to control mages in the mid lane, so he's the wave player. Farming up for the late game team fights, and then it's Reckless on Kalista on Tristan in this case here, who's more applying pressure on the side lanes, and it's working for Fnatic. Got a very easy tower there and didn't even lose anything for it. But they do have to be very careful of getting within the crosshairs of elements, in particular Frog, and his piercing arrows just continue to harass the hell out of their health bars. With one minute left to go until this next dragon is up, Fnatic are committed to not making the same vision mistake twice. But Froggen and crew are committed to finishing off this tower. Another shot into Huni's face. Element should move into Dragon and start setting up their wards. They're 
Uh oh. Oh, Uni. Chains. So close, oh, Frog. Can you get it? Oh! oh he had flash. Nice. He didn't use it. Huni, greedy, saving the fight, but Froggen sniping him out. I was just about to say, Elements, they need to move in and start setting up vision around the Dragon. So they force Fnatic once again to just step away from it, not having to walk into all this Poké, not being able to instantly start the Dragon. Teams always want to, at least a minute before, start setting up for it. Nif is moving in now, so they don't really have the greatest deep vision on his side. Still alive, his Dexter just got in a ward. Now, Reckley <laughs> I thought he was going to jump over. Yeah, he's taking a little bit of damage there. The Hail of Arrows helping out as well. Froggen flashes over, tries to finish it off, but he can't quite polish off the Yordle. Fnatic, however, they're zoned away from this Dragon for now. This could be Elements number two. Same thing again here for Elements. They play around Dragon really effectively. Fnatic can now be happy they took these two early Dragons. Obviously, to stop Elements from start snowballing out of control that way. But it is a problem how Elements is controlling this mid game around the objectives. and. Cooney giving over that kill to Froggen as well. Saved his flash. Save it for what? Christmas? Not to find out. Maybe he's got a few more minutes before that really becomes irrelevant, but Elements now finding a few Fnatic members in their own jungle as they look to take their blue buff, or rather Froggen does. Oh. It's going to be Dexter that ends up securing it. Might have been a little spooked by the fat man hanging out in the brush. Fnatic are stacking pretty heavily on this top side. They might want to try to fast push and bait a fight. Well, Feverman is back in base, so that's not really going to be an yeah. easy task here for Fnatic. If Elements realize there's only four guys pushing, those are why Fnatic just backs away instantly from this one. They are looking instead for Elements to set up a group and then try and get this engage from Huni. Combine that with Rainover, combine that with Yellowstar, you have three massive amounts of CC against squishy tigers like Varos, like the Corky. Even Nidalee is going to die extremely fast, so that's what Fnatic is waiting for. Because they haven't been able to set up the split push. We saw with the Ribbon, with the Javan, because of the way lane top went. Because Elements have kept pushing in the mid lane. That was something Rocket didn't do yesterday. They sat back down in their own towers. They were afraid of moving out of their own base. That allowed Fnatic to set up split pushing and trade picks. Now Elements is constantly just trying to push in the waves. Look at his tower. They're going to be able to muscle it down. Just wait a few more seconds with the minions. And Tabs will take a Gatling Gun shot to it. You can really tell where the focus for these teams has been this game. Elements, they've taken out all of the towers to the inhibitor one in the middle. Fnatic, they've done the same in the bottom. It's really been about the sideways for Fnatic, but Elements are muscling their way forward when they get a chance. Yeah. Can't really push on a virus just sitting in the mid lane, frog in style. He's just going to wave clear over and over, and his tower is still alive. Probably even close to full HP. Yeah, just on like 90% HP, so it's better to take any damage on the side of Elements, and that's key as well. You need that mid tower to stay alive, because it makes it so much easier for you to ward your flanks. Once it goes down, Fnatic opens up the map, and oh, taps. Yeah, uh, we got more He's people in coming, by the way. He's burning low, but still, in comes Yellowstar, goes in for the dunk, but he goes down, Reckless hops in, Tabs is knocked and locked, and JWoww could be the next, as he gets the taunt off, burns his flash to get away. All said and done, it's a one for one. Trading one for one, Huni is very squishy. Obviously building full damage on the Javan and Tabs realized they just turned around. Poked him down Moby Boots as well. So Funi really looking to start roaming around. He knows he cannot establish the spit push. So he has to be the flanking option. He has to be the engage for Fnatic. But that's why his build becomes super risky. Because if he cannot go in and one shot a target, he's going to die himself so fast. We saw it just before. That was Tabs alone, by the way. Yes, it was. JWoww saved by his innate tankiness throughout all of that as well. Fnatic are definitely trying to make a lot of moves, but they're trading even, and gotta wonder, some of this different play is really worth the experimentation at this point. Fnatic and Elements are keeping pace for pace here. The whole game, 300 separates the two of them. Everything Fnatic do at this point is gonna be worth it in, in terms of trying out new champions. It's very true. I mean, we are the ones talking about 18-0. We haven't heard Fnatic talk about it at all. So for them, even dropping a game, wouldn't do anything. They're locked as first place. They can try out some of these new picks. Maybe change the strategies here Maybe and there. Jump in. Maybe jump in on JWoww. I mean, why not? A lot of damage on the Shen, but he may get a pick off onto Reckless. The Spear is just barely going to miss. Froggen still trying to dissuade Fnatic from even getting involved in this jungle. Still playing very heavily around the top side. It's 27. Hey, it's the middle no, they could always sneak a Baron. But they may not get a chance. Froggen comes in to defend the tower. Still staying relatively healthy. 
Tap set up a slow push in the bottom lane. So they're all around the mid lane now from Elements, meaning Fnatic cannot sneak that early Baron. We tend to see 27 minutes is the first Baron for them on average. That's just around now. Obviously, 24 Barons in total. It's been a special for Fnatic time and time again. Rush these early Dragons if the other team is out of position and haven't put up any wards in, in the river. In this case, the elements, they know it's going to happen. And if you start Baron for Fnatic and you don't get the chance to get that hard engage going instantly, again, the poke from elements really start hurting you and you're stuck in there. Tanking Baron, tanking... Uh oh Well, Nef is probably Tanking Nef. He's got his coin on, but they're not going to let him get away that Ice easily. Ulti. There's the Monsoon and the Howling Gale. And they stop Fnatic in their tracks for now. Such a key ulti here from Nef. Ooh. Managed to knock Huni back into the wall so he couldn't just donk him. He's trying again, and Fnatic, they keep staying on Rainover. Might look for some more. On the rope, he gets two. He gets Dexter knocked into the team, and there goes the dunk from Hooney. Reckless will pick up the kill as Dexter goes golden. He's going to surely go down. A double kill for the Yordle, and he reset hops all the way back. Looks like it might be Baron time. Fnatic just baiting around that Baron here. They know they have the hard engage from Hooney, waiting for someone to face check. Instantly jumping in. Reckless getting more kills. Pippen on the other side of the wall here. j -Wall, what can he do? j -Wall's gonna try to make something happen. Rainover's the one he's targeting. Take the smite out of the equation. You might just have an even 50-50. Rainover going low. He's gonna be able to secure it. And j -Wall's popped, courtesy of the victor. Froggen flashing the wall with Nif. And Elements will go back to lick their wounds, but Fnatic have a Baron in their pockets. And we see this time and time again. The teams are trying to match Fnatic. They play well in the early to mid game. They're even in gold. Small advantage here and there, but then Fnatic, they start making some of these extremely strong plays around objectives like Baron. Just baiting it, Elements never found an opportunity to walk in and ward it and ends up dying for it. Reckless even wants to mid tower, let's see. We play again. Rainover going in for the engage. No, I have to cancel Rainover, that one. we don't want to look at him. Reckless is running. He's going to get away out of that one. Dragon's live though now. This is a small window for... Well, I say that. As I say it, Huni's coming around the flank side, and he's going to find Tabs, who didn't know what hit him. Huni gets a solo kill on the side. And the crowd and lets out a big holo holo for just a second as the Dragon has started. And just one mistake on the map, and Fnatic will punish you. Get the Baron now. Everything is open. Elements. Oh, well, not again. Out again. Frogan, where did he go? Huni takes him down, and now we're starting to see that full damage. Jarvan whoa, build, whoa, and whoa. Dexter, the kid, he's getting burned. Has to leap, has to get the coin. Febiv is going to flash for it, but he might have baited himself into a taunt. Going to be able to get out of that courtesy of his cleanse. Fnatic's getting very, very aggressive on these elements. Yeah, now they're going to get a mid tower as well for themselves. So don't even need that dragon. You got the kills. Push it. The wave play is gone here from Froggen. They're just turning on the power. Take it easy, relax. Baron, boom, here we go. Not a problem at all. Inhibitor number one is down in the middle. We're just over 30 minutes into this game. It should be a very easy dragon take if they want to. Fnatic just started to steamroll ahead. What was such a very even gold game, catching back up to it now, has certainly widened by quite a margin. And Fnatic can just go back and do exactly the same thing. You can... oh, and there it is. Goodbye, Dexter. Yeah. Sit back at that dragon again. Say, if any, is anyone coming? OK. My name is Huni, I'm gonna one shot you. And now also for Fnatic, go back to your 131 if you want to. You have the wave limit, you have Huni who can now start pushing in the waves because you have now taken control of the map. I mean, Taps split up from his team. The big bad wolf, or Huni, is waiting in the forest. And he's kidding you, and he's killing you. Dexter, same deal. Oh, it was Froggen, sorry. But oh, they, they, they both died, yeah, they both died. Huni is, is, is mounting trophies on his wall at this point. Froggen's gonna try to stop the push in the top side, but with Victor and Tristana both there, it might be a little bit more than he bargained for. Yellowstar is also coming around the side. Fnatic really turned on the pressure here, so they will be able to keep elements back close to their base. Zuni's just farming up the jungle. They don't really need him at the moment. Oh, yes, TP ready in case he is needed. For now, Fnatic, they have this fantastic Tristana. They can destroy the towers. Elements needs to just come. Consistently clear the waves and then hope Fnatic like over dives, but I mean you have an Alistar as well to set up the dive. Well, we've been talking about poke compositions and what can beat them in the office, but played properly, it's always that hard engage we come back to and Fnatic are bringing the hardest of engages here. 
Krogan runs right into the barrel. Tower being fired down. Reckless has got it on a detonation, and he takes it down. This Tristana just Best feeling ever. Them. Best Ubi feeling ever. is on the bottom side uncontested. This full damage Darwin build is working wonders, and they are just wrecking through Element's base. What can you do? Your Element's right now. You're not here to start fight yourself. You're here to force Fnatic to engage on you. But they're just going to take down your towers because they now have to lead. They now have to control. So all you can do is just wave clear and wait for that potential dive and then try and lock them down with the Viral's ulti. Elements did play this mid-game out very, very well. It, it really has just been a small series of mistakes, but time and time again, that is what Fnatic will punish. They haven't locked up the game just yet, but they're certainly starting to look like it. 33 minutes on the board. Keep on widening the gold lead. Keep on the pressure in one, in two, in three lanes. When he goes back, gets a little farm, goes right back to it. Elements have the task cut out for them if they want to try and stay alive. A loss here would make it very tough for their playoff hopes. <laughs> uh, the damage from Reckless, and then the damage from Pippin onto Champion. Now, and now they're going in. Oh, and Nif is just gone. Chaos Storm's out. In comes Reckless. Tabs now could be the next. He's knocked in. Hoonie's going to look to secure it, but not even needed. Now JWoww trying to run desperately back to his Fountain. He won't even make it. It's Froggen on Fountain Duty with Dexter. And this game is all but over. 34 minutes on the board. Fnatic keep the streak going as Dexter just tries desperately to hang on, but they can't do it. Fnatic with another win. A simple mistake. It's enough for Fnatic to say, okay, they were the one mistake we were looking for. We're now going to take over the game, and there's nothing you can do about it. Taps with bot lane to start a slow push. Fnatic saw him there. We were talking 27 minutes, 28 minutes. Instantly moved to Baron, clear out the wards. They had the pinks ready, they had the sweepers ready, cleared all the vision from elements, and basically just stuck in there in the darkness and said, you are going to have to come in here and check what's going on at some point. We have a Jarvan, we have a Gragas, we have and Alistar, we have so many ways of starting fights on you if you're walking in with your Pokemon to check what's going on. Really? And that's exactly what happened. Kills, Baron, and from there on and out, game is over. And so, for the 16th time, this split, Fnatic make that walk over to the other side, shake hands. That must be boring yeah, soon, right? Yeah, I mean, you gotta wonder what it's like when you just sit in your chairs. Yeah, I always have to. So they're getting good exercise though. I have to walk over, always doing all the hard work on the side of Fnatic, but overall, Credit to Elements for that early to mid game. I love the way they played out in the lane swap, how they reacted to that potential 4v2 dive. Fnatic was setting up and Rick is pushing the top wave and first we were calling it, oh, why didn't Dexter come and help and help him? And then like, wait a minute, TP were ready for Huni. Elements spotted that one, took a tower in response. It meant Huni didn't really get a massive lead like we saw on Riven. Slowed down Fnatic, allowed Elements to get to mid game, start poking. They had good plays around Dragons. They were setting up the vision first. They were landing the poke. But then they just one thing, one little misposition on the map. And the Fnatic shot calling just kicks.